Who knew that taking the name of a, a bird watching guide and putting it into a fictional book about a spy would turn into what we have now, an empire uh, with a, a 007 moniker. It is, um, I'm talking about James Bond. This week, No Time to Die comes out on Friday in North America. And so we've dedicated this week to Bond things and uh, to talk about spy novels uh, on this edition of Ali's Book Club. Of course, it's Alice Kuypers. Nice to have you with us today. I'm very excited to talk about these types of books with you. And what's fun is that, you know, we're not, we're not saying, oh, Ali, tell us about Ian Fleming. And that's not what we're talking about. Or even, or even um, uh, you know, the, 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 the Smiley series from John le Carré. We're going to talk about things that are a little closer to home. So let's start off with Gail Bowen and her book, Sleuth. I was really pleased to be able to recommend this book. So Gail Bowen is a local author. She lives in Regina. She's well known for her Joanne Kilbourne detective series. Yes. She's published at least 17 of those novels. And this book, Sleuth, is with the University of Regina Press. It's a writing book. It's a how-to book on how to write a mystery novel yourself. So perhaps you'll feel inspired by the James Bond spy movie this weekend. Perhaps you've had a story waiting for ages. But if you want to explore character, plot, red herrings, how to map out your mystery and how to make it satisfying for a reader, Gail has this beautiful way of sharing her personal experience with the stories of authors like Louise Penny, who we explored last time, and Agatha Christie, pulling in their wisdom too. So you end up really understanding how you might be able to do this yourself in a very slim, beautiful, swift, exciting read. I, I love that idea, and, and goodness knows, you know, it, it's wonderful to see someone sharing her gifts and sort of the, the her work process because like like a magician, some people might say, hey, those, those are my secrets, so it's wonderful to see her sharing this. She's actually taught creative writing for over 20 years. She stopped now, so she really understands how to make it clear to someone who might want to know how to do this. But as a writer myself, I learn an awful lot reading the book. She manages to teach in a way that could be for someone who's a new writer or someone who's been writing for a really long time. She is really generous with her knowledge, and the book is just wonderful. Let's talk about A Dangerous Crossing. So this is the fourth book by Asma Zahanat Khan, and she is an author I hadn't realized was Canadian. She's, um, she's living in America now, and she has explored in this book her Inspector Essa and Sergeant Rachel, who have been together before, but I've never seen these characters. In this book, they have found that a woman has gone missing over in Lesbos. She is at a Syrian refugee camp and someone has also been murdered, a French Interpol agent. So it pulls in from spies, it pulls in from mysteries, it pulls in from detective stories, but it's also really strong on factual, detailed information. It shows the horror of what a refugee camp might be like. It shows how people prey on innocent distress. And then there's this wonderful relationship between the two main characters, Essa and Rachel. It's it's two people who really enjoy each other's company. They have their own lives outside of it, and they really spark off each other's knowledge to solve the mystery in a really tighter and tighter race against time. And, and, and one suspects that in, in as much as this is a fourth volume in the series, that these are characters that have worked well before, and certainly something that uh, this author has said, yeah, this is this is a good team. I'm not going to break them up. So that, that's Absolutely. good to see. Yeah, she, I think... It didn't matter at all that I hadn't read the others, but I definitely wanted to read the others. And the fifth one I've understood is about is about a mosque and a, a shooting there, perhaps. So I'm, I think I'm going to do the fifth and then the first, second, third. <laughs> so. Fair enough. Um, let's talk about the real world of spies. And I believe the book is called Just an Ordinary Spy or An Ordinary Joe. An Ordinary Spy so, by Joe Weisberg. There you go. Joe would work just as well. It's, uh, this is one that's going to be fun for anyone who wants to read it because, first of all, you have to task yourself with the mission of getting the book and there aren't very many copies around anymore. And then when you open the book, you see that every, every few words are redacted as if this <laughs> is a real document. So some people find this incredibly frustrating, I've seen as I've been reading the reviews. I quite enjoyed it. It apparently, according to spies all over the internet, gives a real sense of what it's like to be a spy. I don't know. I'm not a spy. But it felt to me that mystery, murky world of not quite knowing what was happening, of people saying one thing but meaning another. So the main character, Mark, is trying to understand 
why another spy has been terminated and then he's sent off to another country redacted so you don't know which country it is and you've got to try and work out what's happening wow. so it's a very enjoyable novel written as a real document for anyone in your life who's really into the spy genre that, that sounds that sounds fascinating and intriguing both at the same time um tomorrow is a big day in uh in the community when it comes to literacy tell us what you're involved with uh, tomorrow I'm so excited. So I'm very lucky and honored to be the co-chair for the Saskatoon Public School Foundation's campaign to raise $20 million to ensure that every kid in our community is reading at a grade three level when they leave grade three. Most people don't realize that 30% of kids in our community are not reading at that level. Tomorrow, all day, downtown, kids will be coming in safely with masks and with COVID protocols to get to hear the wonderful author Cody Dill, who we have talked about before, to experience art projects from the Raimi and to connect with the Wonder Hub to talk about literacy. And then over the lunch hour, there is an announcement about the funding for this all in program, which is another part of the incredible program of the Public School Foundation. Well, it's a very important project and uh, happy to know that you're involved in this. Um, uh, we have just gone through uh, last week, we just had the, the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and that, and that process goes on and today is an important day in that regard as well absolutely and because i wanted people to feel like we had a book too for anyone who's thinking about missing and murdered indigenous women today as we all should be a wonderful book that i read years ago very sad is missing sarah um, it's by maggie devries her sister sarah went missing in Vancouver, and it's her journey to try to understand what happened to her sister, but also the systemic racism that means that Indigenous women are so much more continuously at risk of being so poorly treated by our community. And so I think that while when we look at spy genre and mysteries, I think one of the things that comes through in A Dangerous Crossing and also in this Missing Sarah, which is a true book about someone's real grief and loss, is that when we're looking at these crimes and this underworld and how people suffer, there is this whole other piece. And so I think this is a really important book for people to take some time with as well. All right, another volume to uh, check out for certain. Uh, as always, Ali, you bring a great deal of insight into whatever themes we are talking about. And thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Have a, a great day tomorrow as well when it comes to the uh, the big event. Uh, so yeah, thanks I'll for being with us today. Day. I get to work with Cody and help him go on stage and do his thing. I'm very excited. Right, take care. Bye-bye.